Good evening. I'd like to call the BZA meeting for March 6, 2023 to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call. Ms. Harlow? Mr. Horvath? Mr. Trick? Here. Mr. Wolf? Here. Mr. Deutsch? Here. Mr. Jameson? Here. Okay, uh, before we get started, anyone that has a cell phone, please turn it to vibrate or to off. <coughs> uh, next item on the agenda, the approval of the next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Anyone make a motion? I'll make the first motion. <coughs> I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. <coughs> Um, all those going to give testimony before this board or think they're going to give testimony before this board, please stand and raise your right hand. <clears throat> the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, please be seated. Thank you. Um, we have two items on the agenda. First item is BZA 2023-01. Um, Atlantic Sign Company, Sims Elementary. Um, review of the conditional use for the installation of a new electronic uh, message sign on the existing monuments. Uh, we have a new member on the board. Um, he, make sure that he, that you state that you uh, read the meeting minutes from the last time? Yeah, I thoroughly read the minutes from uh, last <clears throat> meeting and also the uh, material for today as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, Brian? <clears throat> Good evening, Brian Snyder from Hamlet County Planning Development. Um, <clears throat> you have a copy of the staff report. I'm not going to go over the whole thing again. This is a continuation of, an, of the public hearing that was opened last month. Um, <clears throat> the request was to allow placement of a digital sign on, um, I'm sorry, the <clears throat> replacement of an existing sign for Sims Elementary with a new sign that had a digital component. Um, <clears throat> the issues that were raised at the last meeting were the light levels, the timing, um, the size, um, and the design of the proposed sign. Uh, the meeting was continued um, in progress to allow the applicant to get some of the details the board was asking and to revise the, the plans in accordance with the guidance of the board at the last meeting. Um, <clears throat> staff did recommend approval of the conditional use um, at the last meeting with the staff report that was attached um, last month. <clears throat> we did receive revised plans um, from the applicant for the sign um, it has been reduced in size. Um, <clears throat> there were two small oval plaques that were on the sides of the brick ball, um, <clears throat> uh, posts. Um, those have been removed. The <clears throat> um, size of the um, Sims Elementary was slightly reduced. Um, so Sims Elementary is a little bit smaller from 9.6 square feet to 6.45 square feet. And then the um, digital reader board was proposed to be 32 square feet. It has been reduced to 24.7 square feet. Um, the total sign size is now below the 32 square feet permitted on the site at 31.72 square feet. Um, <clears throat> if the board would like me to go over any of the conditional use criteria or um, any of the other uh, elements of the staff report, I'd be happy to do that. Otherwise, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Brian, is this a one-sided sign or a two-sided sign? Two-sided. <clears throat> two they did clarify that. Two-sided, two both, both the upper and the digital would be double-sided. So the only real th issue here is um, that it's Sims Elementary, so it's a conditional use that they're coming to the board for, for the approval. Correct. <clears throat> yes, the existing sign did not have the digital component, but digital signage is permitted now in residential districts for 
institutional uses such as this. Um, the zoning resolution does allow 32 square foot maximum size, so they are in compliance with that as well. But because it's an improvement for an institutional use that's a conditional use in a residential district, it has to have board's approval to make any changes whatsoever. Right. Did they submit um, any timing for the signs? I don't believe so. I didn't see any on their um, sheet that they submitted. It says it can be adjusted. Brian, I, I want to be clear. Um, it's going to both sides. The side that's facing Montgomery Road will be lit, and the side facing the ball fields would be lit. <clears throat> sure, yes. It's a, it's a double-sided sign, like almost every sign that, that I, you see on Rob, I any property. I that. I thought it was only going to be one-sided. There was some Road. debate about that at the last meeting. It wasn't clear. Okay, but, but it is okay. And they, uh, the, the company and Sim School, uh, that uh, imaging board would be on all night, correct? <coughs> the Unless board has the ability to um, limit the hours of operation. They do state that they can be, um, that it can be adjusted for time of day, um, and it can also be limited in hours. I believe they testified to that last month. Um, <coughs> and, um, there is, obviously, if you put some restriction on it, um, such as that it can only be from a certain time to a certain time, or it has to be off from a certain time to a certain time, um, that is something that's enforceable by the zoning um, inspector, as well as um, the restrictions on flashing graphics or animation or any other moving images um, can also be enforced by the zoning inspector. And those are all requirements that are in the zoning resolution already. And as it is designed right now, there is no illumination directly uh, in the direction of the neighborhood uh, of the houses <coughs> that border on N Yard. It doesn't go directly. It's not directly facing them, but it's facing. I believe, them. It, yeah, it faces side to side. Side to side. <coughs> okay. Any? Actually, yes. I'm sorry. It does appear to be side to side. Apologize. Any other questions for Brian? No, no questions. No. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Okay. Those that are going to speak for, please come up. State your name. Uh, my name is Brooke Alini. My address is 2328 Florence Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio. I work with Atlantic Sign Company. Um, to answer your questions, yes, it's double-sided. There is an ability to maintain, like, to adjust the brightness when this, like, there's a dimmer that's automatically built into the sign, we can also adjust how the, how the timing that it's on. Um, I did some research on the, the, I know the biggest problem was the lighting going into the neighborhood. The sign is perpendicular to all of those <clears throat> buildings, all of those houses, so there's absolutely no way they're gonna get any direct light out of this sign. At night, the sign at the highest will have 750 nits that's your TV in your apart in your house is 750 nits when it's at its brightest. So at 100 and the closest house that I can see is 120 feet, which is 11817. And there's it's that one sits perpendicular perfectly with the sign, so they're not going to get any ambient light from it either. The other houses are 150, 154, and then the, the rest of them are over 200 feet away. So there should be there's no issue with them getting any sort of ambient light shining into their houses. Um, I think those were the big things that we wanted to talk about. Um, you have and, any... and it can be programmed yes. for, for yes. on and off. Yeah. <clears throat> and we do know it can't, it can't flash. It can't move. It can't say anything like danger warning, anything like that. It'll say, it'll follow the zoning resolution for that. Okay. <clears throat> I want to thank you for coming back with a revised yeah. Uh, structure. Yeah, we think it looks nice. I like that you can see through it and see, you know, you can put some flowers or something below it like it is now. I think it'll look nice. And we took off those ovals. Yes, I noticed those. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> is there any necessity to have um, it as bright as a television? Can it be That's the lowest less? it goes. It's just, it's 750 nits. That way it's visible. It's not any, it won't be any brighter than that, like if we were to turn the lights off in here, that TV. So 
it's not, it, that's just the lowest it'll go at night, otherwise you won't be able to see it at all. And it, only at night saying when it's dark. So this time of year, it won't go on until, or it won't be that, you know, it'll adjust as the sun sets, so. I understand the brightness part of it. Um, I keep using this as an example, but there's those Mike car wash signs. They have those big EMCs that flash like whatever their deal is. Those are way brighter than the sign will ever be, even during the day. Right. Aren't those, isn't that in a different zone? Than what yes, yes, yeah. yes, I'm yeah. sure it is. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just using it as an example, like a visual sign. example. If you yeah. want to get an idea what the sign um, yeah, TV like, would look like, can we turn that TV on and turn the lights right. off for a, for a minute? <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, yeah, and I know the other one's in a different zone. I was just using that kind of as an example because it's a pretty known. Those I mean, because so that's going to give us about what it's going to be if yeah. we could turn it on. But, can yeah. we? but also, when you see this at 750 nits, when you're at your house, you're 154 feet away from it. So keep that in mind too when you see how it's right. about, you know what I mean? about a little over four times where we are. Yeah. So, just keep that in mind, that's all. What? Yeah, can you shut the lights off? Yeah, that's what it'll be yeah. Like. it will be different than what is existing right now. Yes, it definitely will be different, but I, I, I want to make sure that we know that the ambient light is not, it's not going to be so to much that it's, it's overflowing into people's houses. There's no, there's no way that the lights will ever be that bright. Yeah, and especially probably. because it's yeah, perpendicular, it's just going to go right into the streets or into like the entrance and stuff. So it's not even going to. It's over here. Oh, it's over here. I would say that even with these ones on, it's still probably brighter than what it would be in your house if you looked at it. If you had direct light hitting. And that's light. fine. I just wanted. Yeah. No. No. I understand. To yeah. Give them an idea. Yeah. Of what it looks like. Okay. Thank you. We could turn the lights back on. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any questions for this young lady? Will we have an opportunity for the, the neighbors who spoke last month to come? <coughs> no, they're coming up. We're okay. just speaking for. Right. Okay. I don't remember the addresses. Just I don't just so that you guys know, I don't remember the addresses of people that came, but for the house that's at one one eight two five, that's that sign that front of their building is hundred and fifty feet away from the edge of the sign. For one one eight one seven, it's hundred and twenty feet. And for 11809, it's 154 feet. So just, just so that you have an idea of how far away they are from the sign. And that's from the side of the sign, like this side, you know, so they're not even, not the direct on. Anything else? Okay. No. Okay. I'm, we have no other okay. questions at this point. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, anyone else can speak for? Good evening, I'm Brad Lovell, Director of Business Operations for Sycamore Community Schools. My address is 5959 Hagwood Drive, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45242. Uh, first off, just wanna thank you all for the opportunity to be here this evening. Um, on behalf of the school district, I just think it's important to understand that it's our, our goal always to be good neighbors. Um, we work really hard um, with all of our communities that our schools exist in to do our best to um, listen to our community members, which I feel like we have um, by coming back here um, this evening. Um, I also wanted to let you know, because I think at the last meeting there was conversation around what would be displayed on the sign and things like that. I just think it's important to know too that anything that's on that side would be governed by, uh, be governed by board policy as well. And so most everything on that sign is going to be announcements of nature and things like that um, up there. Um, but other than that, if you had any questions on behalf of the school district, we're happy to answer those. There will be no commercial advertising like Eda Joe's or anything like that. No, sir. In order to that would be it. Yeah, that would be against board policy. The only thing that we would potentially do is um, what I could see in that realm would be an advertisement for a partnership with the PTO or something like that, like an event at a restaurant or something, but it wouldn't be advertising for the restaurant. If you show a classroom, a students and activities mm -hmm. and so forth like that with the teacher, hands on and so forth, uh, before that can be shown, uh, do the parents have to okay that their 
child's image is going to be projected on that screen? Yeah, absolutely. Based on board policy, we have consent agreements that all of our students have to sign. But before we release any type of images or anything like that, we get parental consent. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. Is there any um, like signage similar to this to like all the other elementary schools in the um, community? Um, in Sycamore, we um, do not have any di other digital signage like this in front of our schools. Um, and to be very honest, um, I think I mentioned this at the last meeting, the reason we're going down this path is we have a very generous donor that's willing to give the money. Um, it's a passion project of his um, um, to be able to um, honor his um, late wife in this way who was a principal of the building. I noticed that the very first sign does have the Sycamore Community Schools tag on there. Mm -hmm. And then when the first sign was proposed, it had the ovals on either pillar. Mm -hmm. But now it just says Sims Elementary. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to stay Sims Elementary correct. without the district tag? Yeah, correct. And that is a little bit of a shift from our brand guidelines that we've done at some of our other mm -hmm. elementaries that we've been building. But we wanted to simplify it in order to meet the needs of the commission. And it will be digital, there will be no musical? Correct, digital only. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Yep. Anyone else gonna speak for? Anyone here to speak against? Please come up and state your name and address, please. Hi, my name is Stephen Wolf. I live at 11740 Sims Valley Drive. So I live on the corner of Sims Valley Drive and Enyart. So I wasn't one of those addresses that was mentioned before in the study of a viewage of the sign. And it happens that I can see the sign clearly from my home because the way my home is situated the way the sign is situated on the diagonal, I see the sign from my dining room, from my kitchen, from my breakfast nook, because my backyard is <clears throat> my backyard is uh, perpendicular to Enyard because I'm a corner lot, right? I'm not rotated facing Enyard. I'm rotating facing yeah. Sims Valley, so I have a full view of the sign. So. Having a few full view of a uh, LED sign doesn't seem very attractive to me. And I noted in the uh, zoning regulations something about property values and having some co-sponsors commercial name on a sign as that was mentioned that is co-sponsoring an event at the school with the PTO doesn't really add to my property value. So from that aspect, you know, I just heard that tonight, you know, that's concerning to me. And also I have to see it. I mean, I see the one now, but it's static. I mean, that just seems really unattractive to me. And then, you know, we're gonna set the president and then, and then the library's gonna want one. And then we're gonna have, you know, because they're gonna have events and they're gonna have things. And, you know, where does it end? And does it, are we gonna have all the way up Montgomery Road then LED signs everywhere? So that's just a question. But the real reason I came here tonight was when I testified last week, I had forgotten something that's probably of particular interest to the board and that has to do with safety. There are a lot of pedestrians around this area because there's a library and a lot of people walk to the library and there are soccer games on that ball field. There are lots of kids and lots of parents and lots of cars. And what I'd forgotten was a woman was struck in front of the library and seriously injured. I mean, injured in a life altering way by a vehicle. And, um, and her husband came to my home to ask me had I seen the accident, which I had not. And, you know, he was just wrought um, because his wife was really injured very, very badly. Um, I think the person was coming out of the library. Um, you know, didn't see her, obviously. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> done out of malice, I'm sure. And um, um, 
The date, I think, was like August 2017, and I couldn't confirm it because I really couldn't find any report of the accident, but what I did find was a Twitter, uh, a tweet from the Loveland Sims that they had closed off Anyart Road due to an accident. So, you know, maybe you guys could find out better when that actually happened, but I just wanted to raise that because that is actual history, that's an actual fact that did happen and I would hate for a child to be struck by a car or another person to be struck by a car, or another pedestrian, just for you know some promotional value for the school. So all right, that's all I have to say, unless you have any questions for me. No, but you see the sign now, and that sign lights up, right? That's correct. Yeah, I see it right now. It's plain as day. I mean, okay. Yeah, I mean, because that, you know, my, again, the way my house sits, mm -hmm. it's totally visible. So any, you know, someday I'm going to want to sell it. I've lived there 30 years, but someday I'm going to want to sell it. And that's going to be a, that's going to be a big negative. I mean, I mean, I, who wants that, you know, in, in, in their view. And now it's not too bad because it's, 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 it's static, you know, it's, it's not moving. It's not, um, creating excitement and interest, you know, that way. It's just a label for the school. And uh, frankly, it's kind of dim. Well, it's this side, right. sign can't move either. It's not a moving sign. But it's going to change the message. It can change the message. Yeah. Sure, but yeah. it's not so a that, moving sign where people are walking and you're seeing that. It's a static sign. Yeah, but it'll change the message. And it just has a commercial feel, you know? I mean, um, I know this is a, a trend, but you know, frankly, I was really disappointed to see the church on Montgomery Road, Montgomery and Mason Montgomery, put their sign up because, you know, in my opinion, they choose the gar most garish colors and displays, and you know, it, I just it's just not attractive, you know, and. I would wonder why they don't have why the school doesn't have other LED signs in Montgomery and Blue Ash, and I'm guessing that's because they're not allowed. Um, but I don't know that. So you know, a lot of communities don't want these because they look really commercial. So um, anyway, that's that's all I had to say. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. I have, I have one question. Uh -huh. um, are there sidewalks on the side of N Yard where the school and the library are? There is a, oh, it terminates so there at the school, I believe, right where, it, you know, Enyart makes that big turn. I think it goes there and ends. And there's like a little short sidewalk between the school parking lot and the, uh, the entrance of the school parking lot on the left. Mm -hmm. And then the library entrance, mm -hmm. just like a little stubby. <laughs> but the lady was trying, to, I, think, I think she was trying to cross the street. You know, and there's no crosswalk there. There's no, you know, hey, we want to spend some money. One of those flashing, you know, crosswalk things with all the pedestrians that walk up Sim Valley to cross the street to go to the library. I mean, I see them all the time and people coming out of the apartment complex there by the library walking, walking in the street and people going to the park behind the school. There's a lot of pedestrian traffic there and, you know, you know that nobody's been else has been hit, but um, I know people drive really fast on that street. So, any other questions? Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else speak against? Please come up and state your name and address. Um, yes, I'm Tina Martin, and my address is 11809 Enyart mm -hmm. Road, um, Loveland, on, and. Um, and I, I agree with what Mr. Wolf was saying about the, the safety of it. Um, if you, my house is, was one of the addresses that she stated. Um, if you look at that sign, okay, and this is our houses right here perpendicular to the sign, okay, having that flash, you can see it. I mean, it, it, it's not like it's, you know, it, it's obvious that you're gonna be seeing a TV. Um, I know I have, there's, I mean, even neighbors, I mean, you could, as you even drive by on Enyart Road, if they don't have their windows 
or their shades closed, you could see their TVs flashing from the street, and you, and it's it's you, it's noticeable. You can see it. Um, and as far as um, at first, the the sign was supposed to be dark on one side, which I thought, okay, it's going to be dark on my side, and it's going to be lit on the other side. That's how the la at the last meeting, that's how it ended, that it was going to be dark, um, which I thought was also pointless because the but it, it's irrelevant right now because the the school um, parent driveway is is after that that part so that's kind of irrelevant um, um, I just the I, it is really just um, I know um, I worked at Sims Elementary so I mean I um, I know the principal's husband that is funding this and I um, you know, and I just sort of feel like this is no, um, you know, on, on her, but it's, it's just, it isn't, you know, a, a, an honor for her. Um, but I, it's just, it, it's just a TV. Now, I don't know what size this is. Do you know what size TV this is? No, and it's going to be 31. Right. Or the TV that's going to be on the, the sign is going to be 31.7 inches. Okay, I don't yeah, know what size. It's 32, it's yeah, 24 about, square feet. That's 32. Is that 32? Okay. Yeah, and I, I, I honestly, like right, right now the sign, if I, st I see the sign and, and the lights have dimmed and it, we just adjusted to it, but I mean, it's going to be also a 20 second or a 10 second picture kind of coming through, I think is the way I understood it last month, what, what she had said. Right, as the picture changes. So we have changes. requirements in the code of the minimum. And, um, and, and we have a front porch, and we sit on that front porch every day, every night, as, as long as it's nice and we can sit out there. And we have a swing on it, and it's definitely going to be um, an eyesore. Um, and, and it's definitely going to be, you know, light that we can see. And I sometimes even see the, the computers from the offices that they leave if they don't shut the, the blinds and you can see those lights and the, you can see that the computer flashing and that and the computer's only you know a 24 inch screen you know so um, and I also agree with about the safety so um, and I I know there are some neighbors that one I wanted to come and they just said Sycamore will get what they want and they didn't want to. They didn't want to stand up for any of this. The other couple, there, they had a death in the family, wasn't able to come. And um, you know, and it's just, um, you know, I just want you to listen to us as the community that we vote for you guys. And I just want you to take our feelings in consideration. You you wouldn't want this in your neighborhood across your street so thank you for listening to me thank you thank you, thank you. Any thank you do we have any questions no, I don't no. okay thank you very much okay at this point i'd like to close uh, testimony and go into deliberation <clears throat> i guess my initial um view is that if there's a way to try to make this obviously a little bit less dramatic, you know, for the people in the neighborhood, uh, potentially limit the hours or something like that, if we're able to do something on those We can control the hours. You know, I mean, you know, if someone's out in the, you know, in the evening or something like that, they don't have to, you know, see the, the flashing or the, the lights. So, I mean, I would sort of be looking to maybe try to restrict the hours if all possible. Okay, what kind of hours are you talking about? Um, you know, obviously I think during school period would be useful to have something like that and maybe up until like um, 5, 6 o'clock, you know, maybe 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., something like that, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., something along those lines, you know. So when the person's at home at night, they don't have to, you know, be seeing that that sign if it's that, that upsetting to them. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I would agree with Joel. Uh, 
in terms of the timing limitations because I think when we heard uh, from the school district last time, there was a big focus on the school community getting the message that was coming from the board, parents, other visitors to the school building, that a lot of the messaging would be geared towards those people that have business with the school on a day-to-day -day basis. So limiting the hours seems to be consistent with that. Okay. Um, I, 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 so I can get it out. Uh, I'm glad we heard from the, the community, uh, the residents, and um, I think they brought up some real concerns. Um, on the other hand, I think um, I really appreciate uh, uh, Sims uh, coming back with meeting within the code that we have of 32. It's 31.7, where it could be 32. Um, and uh, I think the design is appealing. Um, I, I think it would enhance uh, the area with, with a sign like this. But at the same time, I'm concerned about the lighting. And um, I know that Sims has a program in the morning where parents drop off their children. Um, um, you have a, a, a program in the morning. They're dropping them off at 6, 6.30. And um, they have the regular class hours. And then in the evening, they have activities and meetings and so forth. So I'm very favorable of limiting the illumination. In other words, have a timer on it to shut it off. Um, my proposal, um, I think it's reasonable, 6 a.m. Um, this, as I understand, is going to be photo cell, right? So in the morning during the summer uh, at 6 a.m., it will hardly be illuminating at all. There will be some months, of course, on the calendar where it will be brighter than others, but it's not a consistent 12-month 12 uh, month illumination. Um, so I'm thinking that um, by 6 a.m., parents are coming in, dropping off their children and champions, champions program. Um, and then after that, early teachers coming in early and so forth. So I'm thinking it, it could be on board illumination at 6 a.m., that's my suggestion. And it's off at night at, I would say, 10 or 11. Now, are we talking about just the sign down below? Or are we it's talking shut about down. It's just sycamore? Down. Everything shut down. That's what I'm thinking. And that would um, leave the evening, uh, the early morning hours from 10 to 11 uh, p.m. It, it will not have any impact on the neighbor, on the neighbors at all that are here expressing their concern about illumination. But I think it, I don't think it needs to be on illumination. It needs to be on all night. And I think we can come up with a reasonable amount of hours that, that it should be on. I would like to ask the school board. One quick question. Right. The Sims Elementary. That part doesn't have a bonus on it, so that part me, is um, on all the time. On the time. Okay. Um, yes, sir. What are the hours of the current sign right now? It's on all the time? It stays illuminated all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to find out. Yeah. Okay. Shut it down. No, I'm, I'm just that trying, mean, trying to understand yeah. what we yeah. have now mm -hmm. and what we're going to change it to, if we change it. Right. If we um, change it. First thing is, what's in front of the board right now is it, because it's a conditional use, the conditional use says they have to come in front of the board to present anything, any modifications to the building, signs, grounds, anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. So, Chairman, if I, if I could, I, I don't I apologize. I just want to make this clear because I didn't present it this way, but there is a variance that they need to make the. Um, the message center portion be greater than 25% of the overall sign. And this, what we recommended was 75%, what the sign is now is 78% of the sign. So that variance would need to be for 78%. <clears throat> so we have clear. to have a variance. It does oh. not comply with all the conditions of the zoning resolution. There is still an issue with the size of the so electric related to the size of the static sign. Okay, so what's Can you say the, that again, Brian, yeah, I understand it? The zoning resolution allows the electric, the electric message center, the EMC, part of the sign to be up to 25% of the overall sign size. 
the idea being that you have a big sign with a smaller reader board. Um, <clears throat> and this, the previous sign um, that was recommended for approval by staff was 75% of the total sign area was the electronic message. So basically the opposite of what it um, is required to be by the zoning resolution. Um, and then th that number would need to change to 79% for the revised sign. They reduced the size of both um, the static and the electronic message center, so now it's 79%. So it still, still doesn't comply with that section right. of the code. So they're asking right. for 79% of the overall sign. Right, yes. For the message sign. Right, so <clears throat> staff still recommends approval with the three conditions that are in the staff report plus the variance. I mean, the variance would need to be changed to 79% instead of 75 as it's written in the staff report. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Now, um, I am still for the var uh, to grant the variance uh, from the standpoint of the size of the TV, the monitors that are going in, because you're not going to be able to get them. They come in certain sizes. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be the size to fit in there. Um, but I do agree that we need to have some control over the lighting. Um, because where I even live, I live right across from Christian Hills Academy High School, and we see, you know, when they play football, those lights are on. Um, and it's great because I can walk my dog and it's, <laughs> it's daylight out there. But um, saying that, I think we need to put some kind of restrictions on it, and I'm willing to go from uh, dawn to dusk. So it's on, and then at dusk time it goes off, which could be 8 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock at night, whenever dusk turns out to be, <clears throat> and uh, dawn, uh, or we could say from 6 o'clock till dusk. Because, like you said, mm. people mm. people drop their kids off and it's still dark. So I'm willing to, you know, possibly turn it on early morning, and when it gets dark at night, it goes off. I think it would be easier to have a designated time instead of the dusk. I think so too. Because now you that's sort of subjective, depending on what you have. So well, yes and no. Um, it's if they have the right timers on, and you can set it up that way. There are timers that could see, you could set the see either time or or during the clock. So um, and it, it's all programmable, so you could almost set it to almost infinite amount of times where it used to be okay six o'clock and five o'clock. Um, but you could do a lot of times on on these clocks now. No, I I, I, I mean you could set them on whatever. Time you want it to start on it, 365 days a year, start and stop, um, depending. But I mean, in that kind of realm, this way, when it gets dark out, you know, in the su in the summertime, it's lighter. Even if it's on, you're really not going to see much of it. But when it gets dark, the, the the lights become really bright at nighttime because there's no other lighting around it mm -hmm. to to distract you. So your eyes focus directly on that screen. Like the person said, she sees the, the, the screens of, of the monitors in the, in, in, the, um, in the offices because the shades aren't drawn. Well, the reason for that is it's a bright light and a dark background. So your eyes pick that up. Um, even though the lighting, when you get to the property line, is probably zero from emanating from that whatever, from the... CRT screen or whatever it could be zero, but which is fine. So I, I think I can keep, keep be convinced. I just I sort of lean to what Kevin's saying. Well, we could say regard, we could say regard, six to nine or six know, to ten. I I would even prefer even to be cutting off earlier, just because you know the the school is asking for notification information purposes, drip dropping off and picking up the kids and, you know, at nine, nine plus o'clock, I don't know how that 
serve that same purpose. That's, that's just what I'm sort of thinking at this point in time. Well, the school's going to use that sign for a lot of things, as many things as they can. Um, you know, so it's just, we just, I, in my mind, we just have to set it up and figure out, okay, we want to start at one time, which it sounds like if they're dropping their kids off around 6.30 six, or 6 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. I think that sign should be on. I think, I think we agree at 6. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's the night time, and that's six. where, you know, you say, you pick a time. You want to say 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, I mean. I would be leading towards or closer to 8 or 9 o'clock just because. Okay. Kids are going to sleep, parents are not going to be going out that much for school age children most likely at that time and I don't see the the informative and nature. And, and that's fine. I don't know what goes on in that school late at night, but nine o'clock is fine. So we could go from six to nine and uh, on and off. I mean I, I think I could yeah. go along with that. I mean I would even so we wanted you even an hour less, light sh shorter. You know, at 8, 8 p.m., I'd be okay with that, too. No. I would agree with the 6 to 9 functionality for the purposes of what the school's trying to accomplish, which basically you have your typical days, but then you also have conferences and programs right. and such where families may still be able to see messaging, but a lot of that tends to be wrapped up. By 9 o'clock. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, is, and that's for seven days a week or just during the weekdays? We thought about that. No, I, I think it could be on seven, seven days, days a week. Seven days a week. Uh, because it's not going to... Yes, the neighbors at ni 9 o'clock at night in the wintertime, it, yeah, yeah, it's going to be there. But at least it's not going to be on all the time. Right. And in the summer months, it's some, it doesn't get dark until after 9 o'clock. Like exactly. Summer. So, exactly. So uh, now for the seven, now we also have to grant the variance yes, if we want for this, yeah. for the uh, this graphic sign for seventy nine percent of the overall sign. I just had a question on Atlantic Science about that. You, you had mentioned about the like uh, components. That's the necessity of it. Well, it's a size. It's a it's typical. A, it's a typical size of a, of a monitor. Is, I mean. I don't know, so it that's what I'm asking by, you. Could, it does advise. Yes, please come forward. And, Sorry. Uh, so, and I think if I remember correctly, they told me this, but it does it by like layers. So we have it set to a certain like strips of the lights, and so they do it by like a four block because it's the red, gold or red, green, blue lights. So you would lose it; it'd be too small and it wouldn't fit in the within the bricks, or it'd be too narrow and it would look weird. It'd look like. You know when you take a picture and you stretch it and it's kind of too narrow? That's yeah. what it would look like. So we tried, they tried to find the best size to make it as clear as possible, but keep it within that 32 square feet, which is what we were told. I, I was unaware of the 78% thing, because um, last week everything was 32, or last time it was 32 square feet, so that's what we went with it. 32 square feet is the size restriction, that's true. The, you're allowed to have a freestanding sign at 32 square feet in a um, conditional use. Um, the, uh, we did discuss it last time the variance was recommended it's in the staff report. Okay. I, I guess I just exactly. everything everything that I did, days. everything that we worked on was thinking thirty two square feet. Right. So that's what we based the LED sign off of was the thirty two square feet. Okay. And just to clarify something too, on the LED board, that one has the photo cell. The static image at the top is just a cabinet sign. So it doesn't have it, it it's not going to dimmer light, but it's also not gonna be super bright because it's gonna have that acrylic panel right there. but we, we could turn it off on a I'm not that I'm, I'm not 100% sure how that works well it'll, um, it the can mechanics, be turned the off the mechanics of signs is not something I'm good at there will be a double part. sign is a double similar? sign because it's on right now so I'm not sure how they have it set up yeah we can, they can be, we can make, make tell them to put a timer mm -hmm. on it that's mm -hmm. the easiest thing okay mm -hmm. and one other thing I just want to clarify and I, maybe I'm just hearing you wrong. You keep saying that we get to control it, but it's actually the school district that's going to have to Right. Control. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that you, you weren't thinking it was going to be like in the township. We as, we as the Sims township. Okay. In the township, the owner. Yeah. The yes. school district control has like yes. a, they reach out to the company who makes it and they can monitor everything. And it can be changed within a couple minutes of, yes. of things happening. Okay. So does somebody want to make a motion? Okay, first let me 
Are we done deliberating? I think so. I agree. Okay. So close deliberation. Who wants to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Um, I am uh, making a motion to approve the um, signage um, as requested with the variance of 79% um, and having the um, sign illuminated between 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. on both the top sign and also the electronic sign. Okay. I second. Oh, good. Thank you. Before okay. we vote, I, I just want to say that I, that very, you know, that 79 to where it's supposed to be 75, you know, if the next person down the street comes and says, you know, we made... It's a very, it, it, if somebody you know, comes to us, we still have to, everyone's, everything stands on its own two feet. It stands um, on its own merit. But on its own, on its own merits. And, and that's it. It's, uh, we've run, we've run into that before. Mm -hmm. uh, but every variance time. is a variance to that sign. The minute that sign goes out and they have an electrical short or whatever, and they have to replace the entire thing, sign, they almost have to come back to us. Yeah. So there's a whole, and I'm using that as a, uh, this is a global thing, Brian. I'm not trying to, if but, it, I wasn't going to say anything about that. I was just curious if there were any conditions included with the motion. Yeah, yeah the uh, timing. Timing. Six to nine, but all, also the other three that were in the staff report and the variance with the change to 79%, all of that included? In the yes. Motion? I included the variance in the motion to yes. okay. for the uh, right. increase to 79%. So to make that clear. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you're, you're, right. you're intending that that condition say that the entire sign shall only be illuminated? Mm -hmm. Or shall not, or shall only be illuminated between six and nine p.m. Six a.m. Six a.m. and nine p.m. The entire sign. The entire, the entire sign. Okay, okay. So whether they could do it with one timer or they have to put two sets of timers so on there, so be it. It's a done deal. Yeah. Okay. And we have a right. second. You have a second. Hi. Okay, roll Ready? call. Mr. Trick. Yes. Mr. Wolf. Yes. Mr. Deutsch. Yes. Mr. Jameson. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Next item on the agenda is BCA 2023-02, McGill Smith Pungent representing Cincinnati Hills uh, Christian Academy, uh, uh, 11312 Snyder Road. Uh, conditional use for the uh, conversion me, of the existing turf and athletic field and other improvements. I don't like the other improvements. Go ahead, Brian, I'm sorry. Good evening, Brian Snyder. Um, you should have a copy of the staff report that was prepared for this case as well. This is um, also a conditional use for a school um, in a residential district. Um, <clears throat> CHCA has been on the property for a number of years. They've been through the conditional use process many times, maybe before the board many times. Um, <clears throat> the most recent um, large conditional use approval um, was for the building expansion additions project that they just completed. Um, as part of that conditional use, they also had a gymnasium building approved where their sports fields are currently. Um, and approval to move their sports fields closer to the southern property line, put in bleachers. Um, and that, <clears throat> all of that was included on the conditional use plan that was approved um, several years ago. Uh, <clears throat> what they're asking for today is to um, modify the approved conditional use plan for the sports athletic field portion of the property. Um, to eliminate the gymnasium, they're proposing not to build an indoor gymnasium anymore. Um, and they would replace it with a um, soccer lacrosse field um, stadium, field and stadium. Um, so <clears throat> this would be an um, artificial turf field um, with a thousand, feet, a thousand seat um, auditorium, or I'm sorry, stadium seating. Um, <clears throat> there would be lights, um, a PA system. Uh, there's a food court or food truck um, parking area. Um, numerous improvements around the top of where the uh, bleachers would start, 
uh, bathrooms, covered shelter, um, and a new storage building um, next to the existing storage building in the southwest corner of the property. Um, <clears throat> they're also proposing to um, build a um, <clears throat> artificial turf softball field in the southeastern corner of the property of the area, south and um, east of the proposed um, soccer stadium. The, uh, this area would also include um, stadium lighting, uh, bleachers, dugouts, uh, batty cages. Um, it's unclear as to whether there would be a loudspeaker system associated with that. Um, there would be a scoreboard for the soccer stadium. I, don't, I did not see a scoreboard for the softball stadium, so I'm not sure if it um, would have a scoreboard or would have a PA. Um, that's not clear. Um, <clears throat> And there's a number of other improvements, fencing, um, retaining walls will need to be constructed um, to level out the area, particularly in, along the eastern property line and the southern property lines. Um, and <clears throat> fencing would go all around that to secure the inside of the stadium. Um, there's a lacrosse practice wall um, that they're proposing, a concrete wall um, where you can bounce the lacrosse balls back and forth. Um, <clears throat> and um, several other minor improvements. The <clears throat> plan after we wrote the staff report and sent it to the applicant the plan was revised we received the revisions on march 3rd friday um, afternoon so I, i've <clears throat> i've had a chance to look at them briefly um, and so i'm going to try to, to present the staff report and also present the changes um, that have come since the staff report was written um, <clears throat> conditional uses in Sims Township are required to go through um, this review process with an approval by the Board of Zoning Appeals. There are general considerations for conditional uses and specific considerations for school uses in a residential district. Um, <clears throat> the four conditional uh, use general criteria uh, begin on page, the end of page two in the staff report. Um, <clears throat> they are spirit and intent, um, no adverse effect, protection of public interest and consistent with adopted plans. Um, ladies' plans for Sims Township call for institutional uses. There's no issue there. Um, there's no historic features or significant areas of public interest. Um, so the only two issues we're dealing with here are with the spirit and intent of the zoning resolution and with no adverse effect. Um, athletic fields as part of school uses are permitted as conditional use in the zoning resolution. Um, all the structures meet the height requirements and setback requirements of the zoning resolution. Um, <clears throat> so the spirit and intent would not be an issue. Um, no adverse effect states that the proposed use and development should not have an adverse effect on adjacent property or the public health, safety, morals, or general welfare. Um, <clears throat> staff did have some findings related to this. Um, obviously, this would be a little bit different than what's currently there. What's currently there are non-illuminated um, natural grass fields with um, limited, if any, bleachers. I don't believe there are any PA systems out there currently. Um, there is a hockey rink um, that they installed in an area of the one of the fields. Um, <clears throat> so I know that there is there's noise. Um, there is light from the buildings, the wall packs that are on the buildings. Um, there's sports events taking place down in this area. Um, but obviously that it's going to be a little different with a PA system, a thousand seat stadium and um, stadium size lighting mounted at 65 feet. Um, <clears throat> on poles uh, around both the soccer and the softball um, portions of the development. Um, <clears throat> so it's a little hard to say that there's not going to be any adverse effect. Um, staff did point out that the approval for this property did allow for a new baseball stadium to be moved out to this area with bleachers um, and a new gymnasium building to be built right where the stadium is proposed um, with additional parking that was allowed to extend to the south where the maintenance building is. Um, so there are already some approved um, uh, uses in this area and approved expansion of athletics uses in this area that were included on a previous plan. Um, so it's not as if this is um, incredibly above and beyond what's already been approved for this area and what it's already being used for. Um, <clears throat> the specific criteria um, for schools, um, I'll go through these because we had some issues with all of these as well. Um, <clears throat> the first is that measures be taken to minimize the impact of nuisances such as noise. Um, <clears throat> in this case, the PA system obviously is going to have some um, noise impacts uh, to the surrounding residents. There are residents to the south and to the west of the, <clears throat> of the field area. 
Um, the speakers were not shown on the site plan. I'm not sure what direction they're pointing or how many, how many of them there are. I believe in the letter the applicant submitted stated that they would, the speakers would be behind the bleachers and pointed out towards the field. Um, again, I, I don't think there's a PA system associated with the softball field, but I'm not sure because um, that wasn't very clear. Um, and then <clears throat> um, having that um, PA system from facing away from the residents, ensuring that there aren't you know, speakers everywhere and that it's, it's definitely pointing away. Um, staff found that the, the additional measures should, would be needed um, basically similar to the conversation we were just having, shutting down the, the use of speakers after um, 11 p.m., so only allowing it between 8 a.m. 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. Um, <clears throat> seemed to be a, a good um, timing so that we don't have the PA system being used late. <clears throat> um, the next was landscaping, and this one is a little trickier. The <clears throat> landscaping plan showed 13 evergreen um, shrubs uh, being planted along the southern property line. It also, the original plan included what looked like a 15 foot existing undisturbed area, um, but they're showing the, the planting of the trees inside of the undisturbed area, so you can't have an undisturbed area when you go into it to install new trees, so that wasn't clear um, whether, whether it was undisturbed or whether they were planting new landscaping. Um, <clears throat> the revised, the plan has been revised after this. We recommended, staff recommended an additional seven trees uh, be planted to finish out the row of arborvitaes that they were showing along the southern property line. They have shown that on the revised plan. Um, staff recommended a 15-foot undisturbed buffer um, be maintained. That's what they were showing on the original plan. Um, <clears throat> but it appears that there's more than 15 feet of existing vegetation um, there currently on the revised plan. Um, I'm not sure what if any of that is remaining, um, there's some hatch patterns that they're showing in the cloud that they've got for existing vegetation that make it seem like it might be removed up to the property line. There's a note that says um, limited um, thinning of existing vegetation. Um, and then another note that says um, <clears throat> that the, the landscaping would be um, enhanced in the area. Um, enhanced is not enforceable. Um, it's not clear whether there's going to be any existing vegetation. The arborvitaes that they're showing being planted outside of an undisturbed buffer would probably be more than the boundary buffer requirements are, but arborvitaes by themselves do not meet the boundary buffer requirements. If they're clearing it up to the property line, that's a whole different set of trees and shrubs that would be required along that whole property line. Um, so at this point, we're not really sure what um, is being proposed along the southern property line, but still feel that um, 15 feet, a minimum of 15 feet of undisturbed, undisturbed buffer along the southern property line with the addition of the arborvitaes along the, the residential property lines would create an effective screen that would address the landscaping that should be installed and the um, no adverse effect general criteria. So we're recommending that the, that, that condition remain the same despite the additional landscape plan revisions that were submitted. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> they're not proposing any new signage, so that criteria is good. Um, and then the last is exterior lighting shall be directed away from adjacent residential properties and shall not exceed 0 0.5 foot candles at the property line. Um, the previous plan had greater than 5.5 foot candles at all the property lines. Um, that's been revised <coughs> to um, reduce the light levels, but there are still some areas where it's not clear. Um, we don't have readings at the property line. We have readings five feet across the property lines that are at 0 0.4. So it could still be greater than 0 0.5 at the property line. Um, so that's the, the, the plant still doesn't comply. It's very, it's much closer and it may comply once we get the actual readings at the property line, if they revise their plan to show those. Um, <clears throat> but that's an issue. And then just the general issue <clears throat> with the statement that all exterior lighting shall be directed away from adjacent residential properties. Um, a number of the stadium lights are pointed towards the east and pointed towards the south um, for the soccer field um, and particularly the ones pointed to the east for the softball field. Um, <clears throat> those are pointing directly at residential properties. They're 65 feet tall. They're stadium size light or stadium type lights. Um, so staff recommends that those only be permitted between the hours of 8 and 11 p.m. as well um, and that the lights, um, the lighting plan be revised to comply with the foot candles at the property line um, requirements. <clears throat> So with that, I believe that that's it. Um, <clears throat> staff did recommend approval of the conditional use with six conditions that are on pages five and six of the staff report. And I'd be happy to answer any questions at this point. 
Um, there show the original plan showed parking, and now they're taking away parking but putting <coughs> truck parking for uh, food truck. for the, food trucks. Um, <coughs> is there going to be enough parking? For the building after they get rid of that i believe so but that is a good point they do need a parking analysis to show that they have enough parking for this use um <clears throat> I, I have not seen yet where um, the parking requirement for an actual school building um, didn't account for the parking that was needed for any individual athletic field event you know, like with oak hills high school and elder high school some of the ones that are in our zoning jurisdiction when you when you meet the school requirement you've got well more than you need for the stadium by itself <clears throat> to meet the zoning resolution. That being said, um, when you have big events, parking is an issue. This is a fairly large campus. They do have parking over at the, the um, lower elementary school building as well. And I believe they have some kind of um, agreement with Washington, with the church next door. There's no parking on Snyder Road. Um, there's no private streets nearby that I, don't, that I think would be impacted by this. People are looking for a place to park, so I don't think that parking would be an issue. Um, <clears throat> it is a required note to be added to the plan, though, and so that, that would be required. Brian, you mentioned before that um, when Cincinnati um, Hills came in sometime earlier, a lot of things were already, or some things were already contemplated or approved. <clears throat> are, you, are you able to distinguish for, for me or the board of what things have already been approved or what <clears throat> things they're looking to, sure. to change? <clears throat> So um, on the on the site plan, um, <clears throat> to the east of the building was is a parking lot. It goes back to the maintenance building um, as it goes to the south of the southern property line. Um, <clears throat> on the other side of that parking lot was a, a substantially sized um, gymnasium building. I want to say like thirteen thousand square feet or something like that. Um, <clears throat> that was going to have um, locker rooms and basketball courts for indoor um, sporting events. Um, they also, and I, I didn't put the square footage in here, but it was it was fairly it was a fairly good sized gymnasium building. Um, <clears throat> that was approved basically right where the stadium is proposed to go now. So on the approved conditional use plan, if they wanted to build that gymnasium, they could walk in and get a permit to build it tomorrow. Um, the public hearings have already happened. The board's approval has already been uh, um, granted. Um, <clears throat> so south of that, because there's a baseball field right where the gymnasium is, similar to the baseball field that's being moved for this, that baseball field was being moved to the south. So they were moving it pretty much where the softball field is on this plan. And that was also approved. And that, I don't believe, required the retaining walls that they're proposing. Um, they weren't going to make it into a stadium. It didn't have the walkways. It didn't have the lights. It didn't have the PA system. Um, but it was pushed to the southern property line um, outside of the existing vegetation, I believe. <clears throat> so, is and then there was, I'm sorry, the, the last thing, there was a part in front of the maintenance building is where they park trucks right now. It's a gravel kind of area. Um, they were proposing extending the parking down that way um, to gain more parking. I guess headed to the south. <clears throat> but that area is already paved. They weren't showing an, a new use of an area. They were taking the, where they parked things outside the maintenance building and striping that for parking. So they're, pro they're proposing to demolish a building and, and make, a, a, make a, a field there? I mean, <coughs> no, I don't, no, no, no. All understand. those things are approved. That's what the approved plan for that area right. of the athletic field is today. It was a gymnasium building, a relocated baseball stadium, and additional parking. Um, none of those things have actually been constructed. Um, and now they're requesting to change the plan for the whole area to eliminate the gymnasium, eliminate the baseball field, and the extra parking, and do the stadium, the softball field, and that there's a practice. I think I mentioned that there's like a practice half. Um, court soccer field basically artificial turfing the entire area and um, building two different kind of more stadium like um, uses softball and soccer so no more indoor gymnasium no more expanded parking lot to the south they're adding another building that wasn't shown previously for additional storage um, but that's a smaller building to this very southeastern corner southwestern corner of the property and they <clears throat> haven't proposed any uh plan on how tall that building will be the storage building we did receive revised plans for the storage building apologize that was at the very front of the staff report um, <clears throat> they're proposing it to be one story with a combination of brick and EFS to match the, the I think school. the style of the, um, the campus 
the actual stadium is brick and EFS too, I believe. So I think they're matching the stadium. Um, and <clears throat> 17 feet in height to the tip of the peak, which is not where we measure height to. It's probably more like a 14 foot tall building measured to the mean of the gable, like, like height is measured by the zoning code. So single story maintenance building. So they did submit what Rudy just told us. This is a very ambitious plan and <clears throat> sports complex all at once. And um, um, yesterday when I was there, I was trying to envisionize where these buildings and location of the hockey rink and the best not the basketball, but the softball diamonds, the soccer and the lacrosse. Um, it's going to have an effect on the homes that are in that area. It, it is. Um, you got uh, 10 uh, stadium pole lights, 85 feet tall. Uh, during, the, uh, during the season, people are going to notice that. No matter what, people are going to notice that. I mean, um, I grew up uh, a mile away from Fairmont Stadium, and I heard that PA system, <laughs> and I saw those football lights. So it, it, it is going to have an effect. I'm interested in keeping it as minimum adverse effect on the people living in that area and their property values. Um, this PA system, um, I'm kind of perplexed. Uh, the ability from 8 a.m. until 11, what athletic contests begin at 8 a.m. during Monday through Friday? <clears throat> They're in school. I mean, that's kind of I have weird, weird, very ambitious. We were thinking more along the lines of Saturdays and Sunday games, but um, and just you know, if they're not going to do any games that Monday during the day, then you know they're not. It's not. It's a self-limiting. It won't happen regardless of what the hours are. To try and keep it simple for in, in um, for our improved ability to. Um, to do zoning inspection on it, we just we limited it to hours for the whole week. <clears throat> um, another question about the soccer and the lacrosse stadiums, uh, where the proposed stadium lights would be in place for night contests. Um, do you know that when a contest is scheduled, um, does uh, is there two games going on that evening? Does the reserve team or the JV team precedes the varsity? Let's say the JV team starts at 6, 5.30. No need for lights. But as they go into the third and fourth quarter, you may have to need the lights on. Varsity always tries to play at what, 8 o'clock? Try to start the match at 8 o'clock? 6 or 7. Okay. Um, but to have the ability to keep the lights on, I, you know, to 11 o'clock. That's, you know, I wondered if we could shorten that time period uh, where the lights are. And I know that it's overtime matches. Um, I know that could be a late a starting of a game because the bus didn't arrive there, weather conditions. But uh, have those lights on. Well, they could have those lights on still at 11 a.m. Well, that's a discussion we have to have a little yeah. later. I have a concern about that. Um, the girls softball. I mean, the, the softball fields, are they proposing to have lights for those two, for night games? Yes. <clears throat> and we can limit that, right? We can say... Staff recommended that the, that the, um, the there be no PA system for the softball field, but we did not um, state anything about stadium lighting. Um, I don't believe we, we recommended limiting the lighting for the softball, but you can, yes, you have the authority to do, we can that. do that. We can also eliminate the PA system for the softball games, right? Correct, and that, that is something that staff did recommend. Right, right. I mean, for, for soccer and, um, and lacrosse, uh, players coming in and out and so forth, you know, it'd be nice to have a PA, but okay, all right. Um, the Arbor Vitas, um, the 20, that, well, we first wanted 13, and they came back to say that they would add the seven more. Is that really going to have an impact on the south, south and west corner to cut down the noise, cut well, down the dust, cut down the... It would if there was 15 feet of mature vegetation that they retained along the and property that, line, which is what we recommended. And that uh, is 15 there. Foot that undisturbed. Is there. I see the vegetation. <laughs> um, if, it, if it truly remains undisturbed, then the, the arborvitae is just basically going to create a, an extra shield that will, that because they're evergreen, that will work in the wintertime when you know, some of the, the rest of the vegetation is, doesn't have leaves on it. 
Um, <clears throat> Giant Arbor Vitae are, are pretty big if they if they mature if they actually survive and they get water they can be fairly good size um, evergreens. I would think they would want to replace them because when they're dead and ugly they're ugly looking when they're dead. Mm -hmm. True. Well, if you require them, <laughs> if you require them, then we can require them to replace them. I mean, if it's a condition of approval, them. then we can require them to be replaced if they die yet. Okay. Brian, um, has there um, ever been a suggestion to do like a, a walkthrough, um, so the I guess the zoning board can get a better sense of where all these things are proposed to go because. Um, my, my naked eye, um, I'm not getting a really good feel for where all these things are going because, it, as Gary said, it is, seems to be a, a larger um, request. Is that something that can be done to, um, you know, continue this in progress? So, the, I, I mean, I, the, I mean the, is, is that something that can be done with, with to, you to be, or somebody else? Uh, to be honest with you, um, I've never had a board do that. Not, not the Sims board or the Hamilton County Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, but I have heard of it in numerous other places um, where boards of zoning appeals, specifically boards of zoning appeals, continue the hearing and set up a time to be out in a place. Um, it just needs to be announced what time and what place that's going to be. Um, and then, um, you know, you're obviously you're not making a decision out there. We would have to continue it till the next month's meeting and then come back and del deliberate again as part of a public hearing. But. Um, like Honestly, that. because I've not, never been involved, I don't know how that would work. I don't know if well, I would say that. I guess I'm, I mean, I'm really having a very hard time. I think time. Luann and I would have to work with it, the it school. It is very ambitious. It's it is. Vis visual, I mean, because I'm very, very familiar ambitious. with the school. I mean, um, so I drive by Snyder Road a lot. I ride my bike through the, the school. I see where the school is. And I, I know they have, um, I guess, a football field mm. that's there. You know, so the mm -hmm. what, what I'm hearing, if I'm miss sound like they're wanting like at least two more fields um, in addition towards that and, and I maybe I maybe I'm not I guess getting the best picture because I'm hearing you know different you know different sports different fields things like that so maybe that's for the school to to um, educate me, but I mean they have a presentation that they they're ready to make tonight so maybe that'll that'll solve some of that but um, I don't know how that works, but yes, I believe we have is, the ability to do I mean, that. Do, you, do we have any sense of what's wrong with the current field, that they have a, a, a larger I, field right now? I'm going to assume because they're putting the, the AstroTurf down and, or sorry, the, the turf field and the um, um, lights that they just, they have a, a desire to host bigger games there. You know, we're asking questions of Brian that really need to go to Christian Hills Academy. That's fine. That I answer. just, so, no, I, you know. I mean, Brian's given his field report on the drawings and the submittals and what their thoughts are. Uh, I think we need to take it to the next step and hear everybody else and ask, and ask them their questions. Because okay. <clears throat> that's what I'm hearing. Well, the questions that are going to Brian, to, <laughs> Brian's coming up with answers, trying to come up with answers, <laughs> but it's not really in his realm. <clears throat> yep, I appreciate that. Thank any you, other Tom. questions Thank for me? Thank you. No, okay. I don't have any Thank questions you. for you, Brian. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else going to be speaking for? Yes, I will be speaking for. Okay. My name is Fred Bowling. I'm a landscape architect. I work for McGill Smith Punchin, also known as MSB Design. My address is 3700 Park 42 Drive, Sharonville, Ohio 45241. Um, we're here to present a, a quick overview. Um, this is essentially the drawings that were submitted that were reviewed by staff. Um, we took out some of the stuff that really wasn't addressed by staff that wasn't necessary to repeat. We wanted to make it as clear as possible to try and answer questions such as yours because we understand not everybody's been out there and has an idea of what's being proposed. So if you don't mind, we'll go ahead and, and start looking at the, uh, the first slide is the existing conditions. And you'll see that the overall school campus is about 27 acres and about uh, six and a half of the acres are what we propose to put into this sports field uh, facility. Those uh, acres are highlighted in color there so you can see the green you see there is the existing natural turf that's being used as a soccer field, lacrosse field, football, softball. You can see the softball diamond at the lower right corner. Um, so that's what's existing. The maintenance building, which was mentioned before, and the, the paving and parking 
uh, question is the lower left hand corner of the design or the, the uh, photograph up there. So um, that's where we're starting from. The upper right corner, you see it's kind of a different green kind of olive color. That is an existing uh, woods area that borders the entire east side of the site. It also wraps around the bottom or the south property line of the site. And we're going to talk about and zoom in on it a little bit more here on, on the next set of drawings. Um, do you, yeah, there's a zoom in again. This is just the, the, what was highlighted in color on the previous slide. It shows, uh, again, the natural turf area, uh, the, softball, the current softball area. Uh, down at the bottom part, there's an athletic field rink, uh, hockey rink as is labeled. Um, we also have bus parking down in the lower left-hand corner. Um, there's paving down there. There's maintenance building down there. There's storage down there. Um, there's also a uh, board on board fence along the west property line uh, right up against the paving at that point. Um, for this slide, if you have any questions right now, we'll go on to the next. But if you have some questions, um, please sing out and we'll see what we can do to answer them. Hold on for a second. Sure. This area right here is the vegetation, right? That's correct. And the homes that border it are just above that? I there, can't reach it. Yeah, I, I see where and you're pointing. Right there. The east property line, which is the entire right-hand side of the drawing, okay. has no homes on it, zero. It's the Montgomery uh, Community Church at the top, right, right, and right. about due east is a Baptist church, right. and at the lower right-hand corner is a daycare. So about, uh, say, half to two-thirds of the way from the, uh, the right-hand side, you see like a little V, I think, hitting the bottom of the drawing. That is the property lines where the residential properties start to the left or the west of that property line. Now, does it show up, Chris? I'm too far away to see. You can see here, it's in the middle. Yeah. Property line starts here. Yeah, so there's, yeah. That, L. that little L is where the residential. Where the, where the maintenance. Yes, yeah, wraps around the maintenance area. Okay. Where are the tennis courts on this? If there was uh, there are no tennis courts. There is no tennis this is not the high school. This is the uh, elementary school on Snyder Roads, down towards um, Kemper or south of Kemper, whereas the high school is north of Kemper. South of Kemper. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Harper's Point is right off the top right corner of this image here. If you're familiar with Harper's Point uh, uh, Shopping Center, that's at the, off the top right corner. Um, I don't know if there's any, is there any other questions we can help everybody get an idea of where we're talking about? Good. We're, we're good? Okay. So again, and then this is what we're proposing. This is where, again, I can understand some of your confusion about the fields because what we're doing, we're, we're proposing to overlap the lacrosse and soccer. It's going to be the same area. It's going to be used by the same grandstands that we're proposing, the same locker rooms and everything, but it's, it's one field that's striped for two different sports. So even though there's two sports being played there, the square footage is essentially one field. And then below it, to the lower, directly below it and to the lower left, that's an open area that is being proposed. It's large enough to do a half a court of a soccer field. So it's again, being able to be used for practice, um, perhaps doing uh, drills and so on. And then the lower right hand corner is the proposed softball field. Now, this entire area is proposed to be in a synthetic turf that you know, has been shown to be safer for the children and athletes to play on, which is part of the reason behind the desire to put this in a synthetic turf versus leaving it as a natural turf. Um, the, the storage building that was mentioned is in the lower left-hand corner lo below the maintenance building that exists out there right now and down where the bus parking is. Um, there's also some batting cages being proposed along the east property line at the softball field. And uh, just below the uh, partially covered grandstands is a restroom and shelter facility for the spectators. So we uh, needed to accommodate restroom facilities and so that's where that's being placed. Off of this drawing, I guess in the lower right hand, lower right hand corner where the softball field is, again, there's some dugouts being proposed and there's some bleachers, but they're essentially like you're 
essentially your portable bleachers. You know, we're not looking at putting hundreds of people down there or anything like that. It's, it's not an extensive uh, seating area for the softball. The entire property, or not property, the entire uh, sports complex would be enclosed by netting. And where the netting isn't needed, uh, we'd be using a, you know, a fencing material to enclose the entire uh, uh, synthetic turf area. Okay. Yes? The bottom left and the bottom right where the ball, ball diamond is and yes. all those other, you're not proposing lights or yes. PA? You're we, we are proposing lights? There are proposed lights along the south property line. They'll be pointed north away from all the uh, residential um, neighbors. And additionally, um, we do have the, uh, the initial uh, photometric plan we submitted did not comply with zoning. We've had it redone, revised, and re-looked at by the lighting uh, consultants, and it does now comply with the uh, requirements at the property line of 0.5 or less foot candles. Oh, and as far as your question about the PA, no, um, we had removed the, the school agrees that we will not have a PA system down at the softball complex. It'll only be for the field up nor north. For the field, for the soccer and the lacrosse dual field and so forth. But Correct. you're actually proposing, uh, I may point up here, lights here? Yes, if you look at the lower left-hand corner, you see like a little band. And uh, that I think there's three sets of lights across the bottom of the drawing. And they're all pointing north away from the residential. 50, uh, 85 feet tall? 65 no, feet tall? 65. 85 was an incorrect statement. And you're using that for practice facilities? They're not using it for competition? I mean, batting practice cages can be done in daylight hours? Um, oh, absolutely. So we're, we're not but, proposing this being run all the time. It's only when it's you know, being needed. I mean, uh, if they don't have a program going on at night, they wouldn't be running the lights. It's not uh, you know, financially. No. I don't know, feasible. No, it's feasible, but it's not it's smart use of money. Now, I have a question here. Lights. Yes. Um, it seems like, because this is being put on the uh, elementary school for Christian Hills, it seems Correct. like this is going to be for the high school more than anything else. Well, it'll I be mean, used by both schools. I mean, because this is more of a professional soccer field than it is uh, for, for kids up to like eighth grade. Well, I mean, that's where I'm having a problem, that, that you're putting the high school stuff on this field here. Um, and that softball field, is that going to be for girls softball? Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. So yeah. this is becoming part of the, even though it's one big campus, you're making this one big campus. Sports. Be, between the high school and the elementary school. It would be this a shared still, facility, yes. It's a shared facility, basically used by high school. Yeah. Okay. Is that is the field? Is that is that um, you said for soccer and for lacrosse? Would right. that be also for football as well? It's not planned for football. They have a football stadium up at the high school that they'd be using for football. Yeah, they're, what they're sounds like they're doing is they're taking everything they use at the high school, mm -hmm. uh, where they took the football field and made it a lacrosse field, and they made everything. They're moving it over here when this is done. No, no. no. you're going to play lacrosse there and. And soccer. Well, there? And soccer. No. Oh, you could come up after after the fact. I mean, okay. that's the way I'm interpreting this thing because this is not a, an elementary school state deal. Uh, that's why I thought it was at the high if, school. That's why I was at the If you, if it's okay with you, I'm, I'm not going to dispute that. That's kind of an operational thing. It's more for the school right. to no, answer. No, I'm just asking a question, so I figure out. Sure. I'm, it's if you would like, we'll continue with the going through the yeah, presentation. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, this slide kind of goes back to the original existing photograph with the new field you know, superimposed upon it. Uh, one of the comments that was directed back from the staff report that we wanted to address was the uh, preservation of the woodlands, as it was called on the report. And we wanted to show that, if you don't mind hitting the next slide, the area that's highlighted in green is the area that would be affected by needing to remove some vegetation to build the, the facility. Now, when we went out there and looked at this, that, that area, um, for a good 20 feet in from the existing edge of turf, is all, well, not all, probably 95 or better percent of Bradford pear 
and honeysuckle, which are both invasive species, which are you know not permitted in you know anybody's plans. I mean, you can't bring that forth and pr propose it. So we're, what we're looking at is doing a minimal amount of removal of vegetation, but the vegetation that we're proposing to remove is stuff that is a noxious uh, vegetative species to the community. So we would like to remove that in order to build the facility, and we're not going any farther than what we feel we need to to just build the facility. Um, the, the larger woods area or woodland and large trees is not being affected by what we're asking to uh, remove to build the facility. So we want to make sure we point that out. Again, at the lower left-hand area can I is the... <clears throat> yes. Real quick, all of this green is being completely removed. This is not selective removal, that's complete removal. Right? Exactly. Okay, and then so <clears throat> the remaining 15 feet or less, um, that's where you're talking about going in and taking out all the invasive species. No, what's highlighted in green is roughly where the existing edge of vegetation correct, is. Correct, but all of that's being removed, right? Yes. That's not the area where you're doing the selective. You're talking about doing the selective removal on the, what's remaining along the southern property lines that's not in that green. <clears throat> um, I, I, not familiar with us talking about doing any selective. We're looking no, at removing that. The green will be removed for the arborvitae. <clears throat> you said here. something about selectively removing invasive species. Did you not make that statement? Right. <clears throat> Did I say selectively remove? I apologize for that. Honeysuckle and pears. The select, yeah, that's that's absolutely true. It's Bradford pears and honeysuckle out there. We want to remove that. And I guess by using the word selective, I meant we're not looking at taking out oak trees, maple trees, anything like that. We're looking at taking out. Except in this green area. In this green area, everything is being removed, correct? In the green area, we've gone out there and looked at that, and that is honeysuckle and Bradford pear. Probably 95 percent. I mean, it's also under your dugouts and part of your improvements. I mean, <coughs> yes, it's being removed. There, you're being removed, you're removing it. And what yes. we're removing, whether it. you find an oak tree in there or not, it's all being removed. Everything in the green area, it's, it's <coughs> yes, it is exactly, being removed. It's not accurate for you to say that you're selectively removing stuff in this green area. You're absolutely removing all of it, no matter what you find. I thought. <coughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. Okay. We are absolutely removing it's everything clear. in that green area, and what's in that green area is Bradford pear and honeysuckle, probably 95% of it. We, the other 5% could be whatever, but if you go out there and walk it, you're gonna find out that's what's there. It's, it's all what we call brush. And there's nothing proposed to replace that area that you take it out? Uh, well, we're gonna probably put in turf so we can get around there and, and if you need to maintain something, but uh, I, I'm not opposed to hearing suggestions on if you wanna put some, some decent, uh, material in there that uh, you know it's in a woods it's at the edge of a woods uh, but you're not going to be going into the existing woods area past that green area correct we don't have any intention of going past that what's necessary just to build it just to get this project built which that that area is being held up by a 10 foot tall retaining wall correct in in some areas i think does get up that high but most of it's not that high and Again, um, so it starts at zero feet at the left, right where the arbor body is in. <clears throat> okay. That's, that's where the retaining wall begins, and at the corner behind the backstop for the softball field, it's 10 feet tall. Okay. And then it continues to the north. And it goes back down to zero, yes. So there's, and then that's right at the edge of what you're calling the undisturbed area, is the edge of that retaining wall. So you're just going to build a retaining wall and backfill it, you're not going to get around to the bottom of it and do any kind of training or anything like that. I think you might be misreading. I think we have some space around the bottom of the wall so that we can build it. I mean, that was the intent. Was okay. We need to clear enough to build it. Okay. And uh, again, the, uh, there was a question earlier about arborvitaes. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't understand, there's a lot of different, uh, there's a genus and species that goes with the plants. And the genus is the arborvitae. And the species, in this particular case, is green giant. It gets to be like a pine tree in size, whereas most people in our backyards have an arbor body. It's barely bigger and round than this, you know, podium. So this is a different species that gets quite a bit bigger to uh, help block out, you know, visual and so on. Uh, and it's an evergreen, so again, it'd be year-round, it'd be green. Down in that corner also is predominantly um, Bradford pear. And so this would be an improvement on uh, the vegetation that's in that area. This is a photometric plan. 
Um, those are very hard to read, but at the, pro the property line, um, if you follow the way all the way around it, that we have complied with the uh, 0.5 foot candles or less um, bleed off from the site. These are some 3D images of the proposed uh, partially covered grandstands up at the north end of the, the project for the uh, soccer cross <coughs> combination field. Um, this is the, uh, the, one of the last pages of the uh, staff report where they've given us recommendations. And once we received this, we went back in and, and modified our drawings uh, to uh, address these issues. And if you don't want to go through real quick, uh, the first thing that's on there is a PA system for the softball. The school has agreed we'll remove that from the plans. There'll be no PA system down at the softball uh, end of this, the uh, project. Um, the next one is uh, speakers on the stadium, uh, the direction and the time on them. Uh, the direction would be on the grandstands, which is facing east. So they'd be pointing towards that woods, not towards um, residential housing. Um, we also would like to um, uh, put in with our request that the uh, there's an 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. We have no problem with that, but we would like to have a, an opportunity that if there is a weather issue or something where on this rare occasion it has to run later than 11 o'clock, that it would be all right to continue to use the PA for that particular event, but not on an ongoing basis, just as needed. As you all know, that occasionally does happen. Um, the fourth point on there, a landscape plan shall be submitted a uh, minimum of the 20 uh, giant arborvitaes, which um, we've revised our plans, and yes, we agree with that. Um, the, a lighting plan, um, have the, the proper foot candles at the property line, and we've had that revised, so it's now in compliance. And then the last one is that the use of the stadium lighting um, shall be limited between 8 and 11 p.m., and we agree with that, but again, we'd like for having an exception for a rare event of a weather issue delaying the games, being able to finish the game. And other than that, uh, we've been uh, doing our best to try and uh, work with the, uh, the board and, and uh, present a pro project that the community would be proud of. So we'd like to ask for your support and uh, your approval of our plans. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to address them. Could you go back to where the vegetation is, please? Sure. Go back to that slide. Where is yes. the proposed uh, food truck lane? You plan to have food trucks? Sure. Um, Let's go up to another slide that shows it. When I drove uh, the there yesterday, when my wife and I drove there yesterday, uh -huh. I, I, I saw actually the complex, uh, the field complex is actually in between the middle school campus building and the elementary campus building. And I mean, that's, that's how I saw it, because when you come in, you go to the right and you can see the field. You go to the left, you, you, you have the uh, elementary campus. And I went to the area uh, uh, favoring the middle school campus and saw the, the whole layout, and saw the vegetation, and saw that. Okay. Uh, but um, um, we parked in the area where I thought the food truck was going to be. And yeah. it's really limited, narrow. Do you have any plans to expand that? Uh, we have um, no plans to expand it. Where you were, you're exactly right. That's where they're proposed to go. Uh, we're not messing with any of the square footage of the existing asphalt out there. It's staying exactly as it is. It might be striped different, but we're not adding any square footage to it. We're not removing any square footage from you're it. You're going to have a thousand attendance stadium for the soccer and lacrosse. Where are the parents going to park their cars? They had the current school parking lot and then also down the hill at the other one. And it's my understanding, and this might be a better question for the school, but I believe they have an agreement with the Montgomery Community Church. They share parking with them uh, on an as needed basis, to my best understanding. The parking lot closest to the football field facing Kemper Road. That's, that's a pretty good walk for the parents to go to, for the park there. I park there. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. I, no. Well, Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> I'm going to agree. <laughs> At least I know where, you know, what, what you're planning to put the parking. Yes. Okay. Any other questions I can help you with on the plan? Don't worry about the food drops, sorry. Oh, yes. Um, the, to answer your question, if you look up there, you see where it says covered stadium. And to the left of it, you'll see an, a, a vertical white box. 
and it's going on top of the existing parking. Well, when this is built, that parking will still be available for school uh, staff and so on, but on an event, that area would be, uh, I think it handled like maybe three or four food trucks, and that would be where they would be lined up. And that would still give plenty of room for emergency vehicle, should the case need be, to get past them and get down towards the bottom of the, the site. Well, the steps that you have there now to go down to the play fill area, is that going to be expanded, or is the steps going to be like that? Or? Uh, the steps will actually be underneath that stadium. They'll underneath be the stadium. removed, and, and uh, the stadium be built on top of those. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. I appreciate Thank your you. time. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else going to speak for? I'm taking two minute um, okay. bathroom break. Take yeah. Process. Okay. Let's take a few minute bathroom break. Thank you. So I close the session for a bathroom break. Do you have to take a motion? No, I don't think so. We're good. Put the time limit on it, uh, Chairman Rock.
session, be back in session. Thank you. Can you state your name and address, please? Uh, Brian Fetzer. I am the Executive Director of Athletics Strategic uh, Develop uh, Planning Strategic Planning and Advancement at CHCA. Uh, my address is 121 East Freedom Way, Cincinnati, Ohio, okay. 45202. Um, I wanted to kind of just touch base on, on make sure there's clarification on what the facility is used for. Currently, what we use this site for is our club baseball, club softball. They practice here. Um, our, in the junior high level. Lacrosse practices there, really K through 12. Sometimes they use the, the facility down for grass. Our youth and junior high football teams practice at this facility. Uh, our club soccer team uh, also practices at this facility currently. Uh, the thought process or the adding any game facilities and splitting things up between our high school campus and this campus is to alleviate the long hours of practice for our, our youth and our junior high and our high school athletes. So they're not having to go late into the night. So what we'll be practicing here is in the fall, it will be soccer and we'll be able to practice all of our soccer teams here at one place. And, and thus football will all move up to the high school, our youth, our junior high. So it's in one, one set place. Um, softball currently is is out at, at Schneider Field or our Schneider camp or Schneider area. They're going to come in and actually have a game facility that we can do. Where that current softball field is is located is is, is specifically the old baseball the baseball proposal that there was where there was the gymnasium and the baseball field that was approved prior. The softball field actually goes on the facility spot where baseball was. So it's not really changing too much. It's obviously, baseball is a much bigger footprint, larger stands, softball is gonna be much smaller. Um, when it comes to the having, having the games there, we talked about lights and there's concerns about you know, 11 o'clock. We're talking about games for, for game situation. By moving and adding this facility and making it turf, there'll be Somebody mentioned dirt or, or, or uh, sand or dust. It's all, it's all going to be artificial turf. So there will be none, none of that in, in play. Um, the games, you're only talking two, three games a week that will be played. And that would, again, be starting at 7 o'clock. Uh, high school lacrosse, high school soccer doesn't start at 7 o'clock because of busing concerns and so forth. Our youth, game, youth games do not occur at that late a time either. Um, there wouldn't be, because of this uh, change and kind of spreading things out, since we already have junior high and, and high school teams and youth teams practice there, it's gonna allow us to be able to spread out practices so they're not gonna be late into the evenings. Currently at our campus, uh, um, our high school campus, that stadium, that stadium has lacrosse, soccer, football, track and field, all going on at once. We're gonna be able to split that to be able to reduce in it and really reducing the, the burden on our parents for what they do. Uh, the lighting, one of the, the concerns, we are putting the evergreens down at the bottom of the, of the I think this, this is considered the south end of the campus or the south side of the facility. Uh, that's gonna help out with, with light you know, being shown through. The, the light posts, um, we had 65 feet is the proposal. That's coming from the lighting companies for the optimal um, distribution of light. So it hits pinpoint, so it's not LED lights can be really specific. The, the lights that we currently have at the, the football stadium at the North Campus, these are completely different lights. These lights, um, excuse me, are, are a lot more, they're, a much better, for a lack of a better term, a much better, higher quality lights. Those lights are the old school lights, and, and hopefully we'll be taking those down and sometime to, to betterment that. Um, the food truck, when, when we mentioned the food truck, uh, we put that in there because we didn't want any surprises. Do we have food trucks at every game? No. Do we have more than one at every game? 
No. Uh, they'd be special, special situations where we would have a food truck at a big soccer game or a big lacrosse game or, or, or if we're happen to be doing a, a Saturday afternoon we're playing softball and we're having lacrosse go at the same time. We might have a food truck out there at that point. Um, as far as for parking, uh, the concerns, uh, currently we do use uh, MCC for, for parking uh, for, our, for the school. Right now for the, high school, for the high school stadium, we do a shuttle. We'll park and shuttle individuals back and forth on the buses. We do that for visiting teams. We do that for all parents. We do that currently. So we wouldn't, having somebody walk up and down the street would, would not be something that we would, would want to have. Right now, building the facility for as many seating as what we have would be for special events. Currently, we're not at that, uh, at that standpoint for, for, fan, for fans. Um, we're in the 500 range, probably about half that. But for future, as we grow the program, we would want to, to have the opportunity. And also, when they say 1,000 seats, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Fenway Park in, in Boston. Um, I lived there for a little while. And they gave us our seat, and it was about half of my leg, and that was considered one. So, the the generosity of a thousand seats, I would be would be shocked if you could actually fit a thousand people in, in any facility. You'd be sitting on each other's laps or corner of our laps. Um, is there any other questions that you might have uh, for me? Oh, I, I we do have a letter we can present. MCC, the, the church, we, we met with them, talked to them through parking possibilities, talked to them as far as noise and, and, and so on and so forth. And that takes up a, a large portion of the, the right side. We just, we talked to them about it and just said they, they were approved it, um, that we talked to them and we would deal with them on, on any issues that might arise as well. Yeah. We um, can't use that unless it's been notarized. Okay, we can. and the only reason is it's not a legal document. That's the only no problem. Thing we can, comes across we can, our board. We can, we can definitely have it noted. Ran into that before, <laughs> but are you going to be? I have a question for you. Yes. Are you going to be using this stadium at some point, hopefully, um, as you have a tournament going on, a round robin tournament or something of that nature going on? Uh, we might be. A, we will, we would host. Uh, OHSAA tournament events, they're not necessarily round robins, they're one-offs, and they're in a select time of the year. Because okay. um, I'm concerned about the traffic down Snyder Road. Oh, no. That's I mean, where, because... Uh, no, it would, it, would be, it would be, you know, very, like I said, it, uh, a one-off event that we're hosting for OHSAA if they select our facility to have a lacrosse match or a soccer match for it or softball because you know what even. I'm talking about even when, you know when the elementary school is, absolutely is, absolutely at times they're, they're letting out or letting or getting, dropping kids off that street is jam packed with cars so uh, that's my concern is yeah there, I mean there, there's there's not plans for you know large scale events from a standpoint of that we would be dropping folks in all the time no okay when you schedule your matches, mm -hmm. let's specifically soccer and lacrosse, only the varsity will play at that time? There will not be a preceding <coughs> JV or... They, practice, they, they, they come in earlier in the day. Right, they'll come in early in the game, but uh, right after that game, warm up and varsity is ready to go, right? Correct. Right. right, so there will be actually two contests on that location. Not, I mean, not, active, game, not actively. There, there's, there's well, not a, at there's the same game. time, but one that, you know... Sure. All right. Uh, well, there's an overlap. There, 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 there could be a lot of our varsity teams do not have JV teams. Our, our school's small, so we yeah, but I, have I, a big I, reputation, though. Pardon me. You're getting a big reputation. I'm getting a big reputation. Yes, that's good. I hope. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, we, uh, I mean, I, I can think of for lacrosse as an example. Uh, we currently have three JV games scheduled for this year. That's it. Um, whereas the varsity has doubled, you know, well in the double. Day. All three home? No. All no. three in the row? No, I think there's one at home, one or one maybe two at home, one maybe two on the road. Okay. Um, there, there's not a, a large portion of them. Um, and we, 
junior high games are on different days than than varsity games. Um, youth games are on different days. Youth, youth typically are Saturdays in the mornings. That's when most of the youth events occur because of parents and scheduling and so forth. Um, the conferences do a lot of our scheduling for us when they mm -hmm. outline things, so they're not necessarily up, up to our... So did I hear correctly that uh, you're, you try to schedule, you try to start that varsity match, either soccer or lacrosse at 7 o'clock? Is that your starting time? That is a lot of time we propose. It's, it's the proposed uh, time that the OHSAA puts out for us or the conference puts out for us. Conference. The, the conference day. conference and then we, we, we kind of move things back. If a school is traveling a, far, a long distance, per se, um, let's, I'll just say we're, we're playing Wilmington because we played him in football. Um, we might move the game you know, back to six to help them out so they're not having the, to leave late and so on and so forth. Because the one thing about our, I mean, our, our parents don't want to be there till 10 o'clock at night. Um, and the provisions that we put in there for 11 o'clock is on that off chance that there's a lightning or thunderstorm for safety reasons that we have to, to move things back. But I can promise you if you've ever been to one of the CHCA games, I'm the last one there usually, or one of our athletic department, and folks are getting out of there as soon as they can, so they're not, so we don't have the lights on. And we flip the lights off literally uh, as soon as the field gets cleared up. We've got a whole crew that cleans things up and, and gets them off as soon as we possibly can, because athletic department staff doesn't want to be what well, doesn't want to be there as late as possible. And usually a varsity match, uh, hour and a half. Weather, nine, weather good. Nine, 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 ninety minutes. Ninety minutes. Mm -hmm. Hour and a half for uh, for soccer. The um, softball field there. Do there are games going on at softball um, and or soccer and lacrosse at the same time? Would there be? Is that is that something that there there happen? there could be? There's there's the possibility of that um, to have them what both at the same time. So as opposed to having potentially, I'll just use this as an example. Having one on Tuesday night and one on Wednesday night, we could have both of them on Tuesday night and we wouldn't have to have a game on Wednesday night. And um, what other things would you be using the softball field for? I mean, just, do they have a baseball program? Would they do? Our baseball field is on our other campus. It was on our high school campus up the road, so there would be no baseball I mean, movie there. Would there be other things that you'd be using, like, we're hosting, where that events, area is, hosting, we, hosting events. We, I mean, where that area is currently, I mean, we could have, you know, soccer practice. We could have our junior high soccer team practicing on, on that softball field. Or similar to the OH, OHSAA, you know, events for soccer. Would that be similar for softball as well? Mm -hmm. Like um, hosting potentially events. We, you but could you could always host a game. Um, it's it's advantageous to us to, to try to be able to host postseason for us because we get to have them in our field as opposed to traveling to Dayton or to Anderson or something. And can you explain to me again how is this setup going to be affecting the high school? What how is the high school going to look in regards to their games and their activities and things like that? In in what in what manner? So I thought like you said. I thought you said like this is designed to, you know, have all the games at one place, all the practices at one place, and the high school is going to have their own. So I'm wondering, um, how is that going to affect the high school? I mean, is there going to be more people coming so, to high school at certain times because high school is going to be more at use for certain times? No, no. I mean, what what it will do is right now we have seasons that overlap with one facility, so we have. Example, right at this time of age, you have lacrosse practice, boys and girls practicing, and track practicing at the same time. Um, it's not, it's not, the, not the safest. We have to you know, do a great job of, of monitoring it to make sure everything fits in right. By moving lacrosse down here, track has their own time, and their practices can be when they are. Right now, we have to stagger. The, the, you know, you have lacrosse practice, different teams practicing later in the evening. 
we don't have to do that because we're moving down here. In the fall, football, junior high practices down here in the fall. Um, some of our youth practices down here in the fall, some soccer practices down in the fall. But our varsity teams all practice soccer along with football at the stadium. So now we can split that up and allow for all, the, all of our soccer teams to be in one place, help out coaching, help out communication. All of our football will be in one venue, one area. Again, help out with communication, <clears throat> help out with the time of scheduling, our coaches to have access to be able to help out the younger kids and, and to be a little more con conducive to that. Does that explain or does that help me? Did I help you out or? I mean, explain that I'm just wondering how much more demand um, just the football field we're having. You're, you're saying it's going to be less demand. The football field's not going to have it because you're taking two teams off the football field right, right now. So you're saying it's less demand. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And you're giving them a better place to be able to practice than what it was or it is currently because it's turf as opposed to the, the grass and water and everything. It's to clean up that area yeah. from rain. Now, my question, it really doesn't have any, it does and it doesn't about this actual job, but what's happening with uh, your place across from uh, Natorps? What is that used for? Because that used to be, I guess, lacrosse and... Yeah. We're, we're, that's uh, to be determined. We would, the, this would become our focus point. Down okay. Here. So you're moving it here. More or less, it's cl in, closer. In, in some places, it's a lot closer. Yeah, it's a lot closer from a traffic standpoint. You have kids going way up there. It, it just makes things a lot easier okay. on, on parents and on. on I was just ask because yeah. that's a sure distance. <laughs> you got another question? I can yes, tell. I do. All right, I'm ready to answer. I, I'm waiting and yeah. listening to see if you can convince me. I haven't made. The decision, but I have okay. these two areas: the lighting, yes, and the PA system, and the lighting area that I I need to be <laughs> need to hear more convincing is this area in here. Sure. And I know there's not going to be any lighting on the softball on the, on the softball diamond. I understand that. There'll be there'll be no PA on the softball. There'll oh be, no PA. Be yes. And yeah. Okay. So and so can, so one of the things to to keep in mind is. Mm -hmm. If softball's not going on, the lights on that side of the field don't need to be on because you're, you're, the, the lights are very pinpoint. They're, they're, they're going focused directly on events. If you're down at TQL or if you're at any, any kind of newer stadium that has new modern day lights, lights get focused specifically down. I mean, they're, they're not uh, old lights. If you think about the ones at the stadium, they kind of sit up and, and you can see the light fixtures and everything kind of goes out. It kind of goes down, but it, it shines yeah. out. Because I, I, somebody had mentioned about, uh, I heard somebody mention about um, when they were in high school and they kind of saw the lights, you could see it for miles, it seemed like. The lights now are angled, so it's a direct focus onto the field of play. So there's better lighting so you can see the ball better. You can see things more as opposed to having them upwards shooting out. It gets focused down at the ground. That's why that 65 foot um, pole structure is what was explained as, you know, ideal. But Yo, the softball, there might be eight home games yeah. a year. So you're not having many, um, but for... But if you're living in that neighborhood, uh, that's a lot for them. That's a lot. No. The, uh, you know, and when, when we have lacrosse games and so forth, there's no, I mean, we don't need to have the softball lights on. They don't, they won't need to be off. It's, it's one whole system, but it won't be focused specifically on, on the field. Yeah. I mean, I and, the P, and the PA system, I mean, we won't, we're, we, we've agreed it was in the, the recommendations and, We'll eliminate it from softball, as saying, "Hey, if that's if that's a concern." But you still haven't addressed this area here. Your practice fields can your practices can be during the day. You, you and at night, let them go home and get their homework done. Pardon me. But this area right here, I, I understood that uh, this area right here will have lighting. Yes. Well, yeah. Yes. 
Why do you need that? And the chance, well, that be, that's connected to softball for one. And, and I'm still trying to convince why the games have to be played at night. Well, there's, if there's delays on, on so on and so forth, if the softball game goes long, we might need him. Do I ever see us playing a softball game at 11 p.m.? Absolutely not. I would, no chance. Uh, but if we have to reschedule a doubleheader because of some, something that happened, and we might have from, from, a, from a, if another school, if our games get rained out, you know, in Ohio, there's a lot of rain in the spring. And that's what this, this facility can help eliminate our opportunities to get things rained out. But to be able to have lights so we can, can play at night if, uh, if there's a doubleheader of some sort. It's not, like, again, it's not a, um, a situation that's going to happen on a regular basis. But on those offshoots that we need to do it. It would be it would be there. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> Any other questions? But just no. for clarification, at the south of that spot, basically those lights will shine north. Correct. And then on the west of that spot, they will shine east, away from residents. Correct. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else going to speak for? Thank you. Okay. Anyone here to speak against? Okay, that was easy. Yeah. Um, okay, I closed the testimony and now go into deliberation. I still think it would be useful to go take a, either a drive or a walk through the um, neighborhood or, or the uh, the facility, I'm not familiar with it. Um, the, the pictures do help me understand the setup better, um, but I'm still not overall like best practices to suggest this is, you know, what we should be doing without having a more detailed look at it. I am also somewhat concerned about how much do the um, residents in that neighborhood, in these neighborhoods, know about it? I don't know what's been um, publicized. I don't know what's been discussed. I don't know what's been advertised. Well, every, everybody, and correct me if I'm wrong, every piece of parcel that touches this area gets notified. Mm -hmm. Sir, everything 200 feet outside the property was notified. Yeah, but if they're proper, definitely if any property touches it, yes. they get notified. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, and they have the right to come here mm -hmm. and voice their opinion. So, in mind, if I asked anybody to go against. Right, there's no one here. And there's nobody here. So I understand. Apparently, I mean, they were notified, weren't they? So, mm -hmm. up in. No response is like having. It's in our newsletter and it was on, it's on our website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everybody's notified. You know, people are notified and mm -hmm. they're not here to voice their opinion. It's no opinion is a for. It, they're okay with it. I say, I say. <clears throat> I mean, that's the, the way. Otherwise, they would voice a real heavy opinion and come here and talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, I um, am not um, very excited about um, approving, you know, issues in regards to lightage, lighting, PA speakers seem to be very loud in the neighborhood. Um, those types of things seem to be, you know, more than I would want to vote for. Okay. Uh, anyone else? No, I mean, I'll give my opinion at the end. Okay. I think it's exciting. I think it's it's going to be a beautiful complex. Um, I'm looking forward to watching lacrosse and so forth. But here's the big but: I still have the lighting issue. The lighting, this uh, I mean, batting cages need to be lighted. Um, the, the the practice soccer field need to be lighted. I just see that can be done. It, it's just aggressive to over over aggressive about it um the uh 
baseball diamond for the softball, I don't think it's necessary. I don't, I don't, I think again, it's over aggressive. With all these lighting systems here, um, my gosh, we can probably, if they were all turned on at the same time, you could probably light, probably land a B7, uh, a B737. I mean, like it's going to be a landing field with all the lights up in there. You know how um, Groom's Field is when all the lights are on at night mm -hmm. at that? I mean, it's, who needs the sun? I mean, it's, it, it's, but that's a different environment than here that, that we're talking about. So um, I can understand the PA system for the soccer and uh, the lacrosse. I can understand uh, the lighting system there, the 65-foot um, poles. Most stadiums, if you would check, of stadiums, poles, they're 65 feet. That's, that's the standard and so forth. So there's no issue there. As long as the looms is 0.5, uh, which they agreed to, but I just think that it's just over aggressive, too much for that that half of the uh, of the of the sports complex. And I think their activities can be well worked. It, it can work to, during daylight hours, and and not need uh, so much light. Okay. Yes. Well, light. My understanding of lighting, please, okay, which is enough to drive you guys crazy. <laughs> um, the cutoff, even though you could see the lights, it's at the property line, and the amount of light at that property line is point. I think it's point oh five. Point five. Point five. So, I mean, that's like the. It's like really, there's no light there. It, it's very little. Um, so that's even though you could see the light, it it's also being dissipated by a lot of the vegetation around there to around the neighborhood so you're not going to see a lot of it from that vegetation because they're not cutting it down the newer lights they have they could get them really tight cutoffs and uh and deal with the lighting but down in the practice field you know if that's something that this board it feels like it's not needed we could say no to that um and i live right across from the high school and right across from the football field so i know about the loudspeakers and i know about the lighting um and they have pine trees right there that have grown up and i've watched them be planted and i've watched them grow up um and they also take care of it so if they die i've seen them replace them too so that's not an issue, and they, and they come close to replacing it with nice sizes. They don't put in a little one. They put in one, you know, maybe half the size of the one that came down. Um, and I don't have that much concern about the lighting on the neighborhood. I mean, I, I could see the lights, uh, the loudspeakers sometimes, you know, when there's no other extemporaneous noise out there, those loudspeakers can get loud because there's no other noise to muffle that sound. Um, and I hear the football games and I think it's great. I mean, this is just me talking as, as a neighbor. I just think it's great because now I know people are having fun. And uh, when I bought my house, I was one of the things I was glad of that there was, they were building a high school there. Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to have a strip center go in that big piece of property, so um, I was glad. And really, it does ex add to the value of your of your property in some format. Um, and out of every school that that I've ever dealt with, and I'm talking for Cincinnati Christian Hills Academy, they have been great to the neighbors if there was a problem they let they take care of the problem they're not afraid to confront it and uh, and step up to the plate so if there's something that does happen in a neighbor complaints you know um they've taken care of it uh, when they had and this is just me and i'm talking for cincinnati christian hills academy because i like them as a neighbor um when they had fireworks you know 
It took them a while, but they finally sent out cards to everybody in the neighborhood about the fireworks because, you know, you want to be known. I have a dog that hates fireworks, so I have to, when I know the fireworks are coming, I have to go to my son's house. But that's the kind of na the neighbors that you really want. And um, I don't, because none of the neighbors were here to talk about what uh, against them they're okay with almost everything that they do because we look at it from the board standpoint and they've come across this board continually for everything that they do um that they want to listen to us you know and if we say that they don't want that we don't think lights are important at this point in time for, for the practice field and for the yeah. um, and for the baseball, baseball. for the foot, for, for the softball, uh, softball state for field, I mean, they're going to listen to that and probably go with say, okay, we won't put them there, uh, but don't be, but be prepared that it will probably come across this board as for it down the road uh, mm -hmm. as things progress. Yeah. But uh, you know, so I don't mind making someone making that motion, mm -hmm. but. Uh, for what they're doing and keeping the vegetation around is is very important because if they thinned all of that stuff out, um, that would cause a lot more problems because then you would hear everything and uh, and this stadium is sitting up high because you have a retaining wall, a ten foot high retaining wall compared to um, building a mound around it. So. To address your uh, point about the PA system, it's stated here that uh, to the north and to the east, right, Brian, that the uh, speakers will be facing for the PA system for the soccer. North. We recommended that. They said that that's the case, and, but I don't, and they I don't have to? any plans to indicate that. Yeah. I mean, I, I live probably somewhere where you live, and I think uh, CHCA is great neighbors. And when I have the homecoming game, I get the notices and things like that. Um, that's one game a year, the homecoming game. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to be having multiple games. And I hear or, down down at this facility. I know, but I hear and, the football games. I hear the baseball games. I hear the soccer games. I hear everything that's on their loudspeaker. I hear. I hear band practice. I hear. I think it's dance or something because they play music like on Saturday mornings or something. I don't know what it is, but uh, Fairmont Stadium. But they, but I do hear it. Yeah, uh, I know what you're talking about. So and Ralph, I, I agree with your sentiments. Um, just being in the same subdivision, um, I think you're already across the street from me. Right. The only thing it. that I um, was just wondering about is just the traffic logistics and safety and pedestrian safety should someone decide to park because with the subdivisions that neighbor the high school there is an option to park on those streets and we get notice about that but that per corridor on Snyder seems fairly congested and I was just wondering about just I brought that, that up that's my only concern I mean it's yeah. it's a con it, there's a chance for congestion because Snyder's not big. Right. Um, Kemper is bigger, but they do have they have the high school parking lot. They have the one right behind that, by that between the ball fields and the high school. Mm -hmm. They have um, the school parking lot that where all these stadiums are. Right, they can park in a lot of places there. Right. Um, and they have the neighborhood the church. Um, and they do say, and I noticed that they do shuttle. So, but I'm, you know, but I'm still concerned because there's no walkway between here and there. And walking on Snyder's is that way to the to the uh, elementary school. Somebody can get hurt, and that's a concern. Um, and I brought that up, and I don't know how to correct that without saying we have to put sidewalks in. Yeah, and in some townships, I'm going to put sidewalks in. So, uh, you know, those are issues, and that's why I also asked about um, tournaments. 
because the minute you put a tournament there, you're tripling the amount of people that will be actually going there and getting there and how to deal with it. So, um, you know, uh, I'm willing to listen to everybody. And if you want to go out there, I mean, if the board is willing to want to go out there, maybe we do postpone it until next month if everybody is amicable for it. And set up a time to go out and we can walk the site. I, I mean, that's just, you know, one of my concerns. I, I, still, I still feel like, you know, not that I will or won't be, you know, won over by argument. I think you make good points, especially about the lighting and things like that. I still think that um, the overall size of that facility is, it's going to be a state-of-the-art facility, it seems mm -hmm. to me. And if it's going to be a state-of-the-art facility, I think they are going to want to house more events. And it's going to, instead of it just being, you know, their soccer, their uh, lacrosse, there's going to be much more tournament lacrosse, much more tournament soccer. And that those facilities are going to be used a lot more. That's going to be an income generator for them. And I think the space, I think the traffic is going to be um, extenuated for more than just their games. I think it's Brian, going to be let me ask, longer. Let me ask Brian something. Brian, if they set it up for tournaments, can we put something in the addendum or in the proposal to uh, maybe have police officers and control the traffic? No, <clears throat> you don't have the authority to require them to have police officers control traffic in the right of way. Mm -hmm. I don't believe. I, I, okay. I'm not positive about that, but I'm never. So the only thing that. really in front of us is the approval of this facility, the way it's Correct. been designed, basically. Yes. Do we have any concerns about that 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. the PA? They Saturday have it now. Morning, they have it now. Saturday I know what the morning, football field. match at eight o'clock in the morning, and I'm you know you want to change it to nine o'clock. Yeah, you know, in the morning that's fine. I mean, I have a problem with that. Push it back, you know. But I, I see. Do, I do know that some of the football. I know the football games go to ten, ten thirty. So yeah, the uh, reserves Saturday morning, and they usually start around ten. You know, well, we can't just say. Do we do it globally? Or just for this conference. It says Saturday. Yeah, this, well it says eight AM to eleven. Yeah, well, Glob then, globally, Monday through Sunday through Monday. Th Sunday through Saturday. Um There's not gonna be too many contests at eight AM in the morning. Oh, on a weekday. On a weekday. Oh, school on a weekday. So on, on a weekend. Day, I don't so, think so so we could say nine o'clock. Okay. Nine o'clock till eleven o'clock. If you that, that's <laughs> you happy, I'm okay with that. I don't, okay. you know. I was just thinking of those people Saturday morning at eight o'clock. Oh, trust me, <laughs> they have it. They have they have stuff okay. Saturday mornings early. Um, I played sports. I know <laughs> bright and early. Um, does anyone want to make a motion? Nine, nine o'clock in the morning is fine. Yeah. They're not gonna have anything today. No, that's fine. No, and not during the week either. Monday no, it, they made, they said it because it was a global thing, right. um, right. and it's easier instead of saying on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it or Thursday it's this, <coughs> Friday, Saturday, and Sunday it's this. You know, they just right. if nine o'clock is okay. yeah. So um, I would like to make a motion about okay. the lighting at the southern part. No, do you want to make a motion about the whole thing? I have no issue with the lighting on the soccer and the lacrosse. Okay. Sports. I have no problem with that or the PA system. No problem with that. It is the southern part here. Okay, let me, I'll make a motion that we. There, there's no lighting. That we grant the proposal okay. yeah. uh, for BZA 2023 02. as written with the following exceptions. Okay. That the hours of operation for the PA is 9 a.m. Till, till 9 a.m. till 11 p.m. Globally. Globally. Monday, Sunday through Saturday. Okay. 
and that at this point there are no lights on the Sorry. southern part of the, the field. Could I also add, may make a motion that in the future they can come back and... They will have to come back. They, it's, we, anything that they change, okay. they well, have to come to us. Okay, and they're, because they're more welcome to come back for... It, it's a conditional uh, use. Another, uh, for another discussion about it. Right. If they wanted to reinstall the lights into this. That's program. conditional use. Okay, all right. So yes, I'm not discouraging them in the future, but... For no, right we, now, don't, we don't even have to bring them to them because conditional use, anything that they make to the site or their facilities exterior-wise, it has to come because of, in front of the okay. board. Okay. Would the board be willing to consider or limit the stands, the... Um, from a thousand to like five hundred no. or something less. No, I, I, no. Mean, I think a thousand is reasonable. Yeah, I for both for both sides, visitors and home yeah. supporters. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. I, I'm fine with that. Um, okay. So, well, you, you made a motion. Yes. Correct. Okay. We have to um, vote now. Is the, it, the south part of the field. Can we? Maybe clarify that. Did you get the southern part of the field is the to be softball diamond. The softball, softball diamond and the, the practice, uh, the soccer, practice field. soccer field. And the batting cage. There is a batting cage. No, there's a batting cage. So, can we say no lights south of the soccer and lacrosse field? Yes, we no, can. No, we no. can say it that way. I agree. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't. We don't have any other conditions to put on it. So. Um, so you're okay with the, the um, planting and all that then? Yeah, I'm okay with the okay. planting. So but, you're ready then? Yes. Do we get a second? So yeah, we need a second. Oh yeah, who's second? I'll second. And this is on the motion, right? We're taking a vote among us on the motion that was just correct. Proposed. Okay. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was trying okay. to keep it nice and clean and simple. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be it's Okay, Mr. Wolf. Yes. Mr. Deutsch. No. Mr. Jameson. Yes. Mr. Trick. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let me get my list here. Any? Do we have to approve the minutes from the last meeting? Well, we're going down. Okay. Oh, we're, we approved the minutes. Way back. No, no, that's the minutes that were attached. Right. Uh, from the January 9th. Luann, um, any old business? No, I don't have anything. Any new business? Um, I don't have anything. Administrative matters approving the minutes of January 9th. Do we have all the participants in that one? Yes. You can, you got enough people. Where's my minutes? Here they are. Okay. Okay, let's see, we had, I want to make sure we have all the people in me. Jameson. Okay. I just want to make sure we're all here. Mm -hmm. We have people. Okay. I move that we accept the, uh, the minutes of Sim Township Board of Zoning Appeals uh, for February 6, 2023. I motion. You second? I, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I got to take a vote. Though. Hold on. Yep. I wasn't here for February 6th, but. Right. You have to, you just say, stay. 
So I guess I have to do it separate, right? I have to do January and then I have to do February? Yes. January meeting. Mr. Trick? Yes. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Mr. George? Yes. Okay. And Kevin abstains. You have to abstain. Yeah, I wasn't here. Okay, February minutes. Mr. Trick? Yes. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Mr. Deutsch? Abstain. Abstain. Mr. Jameson? Yes. I got to <laughs> so tired. Okay. Like, right in the middle. Okay, next okay. item on the agenda. Move to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right.